Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called We Are Here to Help, written by Entrak. Sucking nervously on his antennae, Krizik Six rocked back and forth on his seat. Four out of his eight legs tucked up under his abdomen, the rest either tapping nervously on the floor or frantically typing on the various keypads. Alternating the signal frequency of the planetary distress call was broadcasting through. In the background, the repeated message on the broadcast echoed, along with the glaring sound of the environmental alarm outside. Grizzik 6 didn't dare to look at the surveillance monitors showcasing the exterior city. There was only so much death one could muster to look at, and whatever was left of the sanity in Grizzik 6's mind needed to be preserved. The law task was too important. Planetary distress call, planetary distress call. Coordinates, digitized string of astronomical coordinates. Planet hit by pulsar gamma ray burst. The atmosphere is dissipating rapidly. Request immediate aid. It went on repeat, on as many frequencies as the system could handle. The task was futile, Krizik Six felt. All that kept the population from total annihilation right now was the containment fields. Greenhouses and other dwellings that could sustain some sort of shielding, but they could not last. It had been months since the gamma ray had hit the planet. Out of nowhere, it had struck, evaporating the atmosphere, causing the air in the bodies of billions to expand into the sudden vacuum appearing, causing unimaginable pain and suffering of all, finally, death. What remained of the atmosphere, caught on the far side of the planet, spread out along the surface shortly after. But it was hardly enough to sustain life. The planet, far out in the arm of the galaxy, was poor, both in tech and economy, at least compared to the rest of the Galactic Federation. The Galactic Federation was a slow and cumbersome beast, with bureaucratic processes that could take what felt like a full rotation around the galactic center. Before a dry response of rejection of the application due to a misspelled word would plop into a mailbox, prompting the whole process to start anew. They were the first to be contacted with dire request for emergency aid to be sent, only to have that distress call be stamped, put in a drawer, looked at, stamped again, and then put in a different drawer, found, lost, found again, and then stamped with the denial seal. It was too far. The planet was too poor to pay the expenditure cost of aid, and the lack of a comma where a semicolon should be was in breach of proper documentation process and, not to be forgotten, the missed membership payment. In lieu of this, as well as the notified projected issues of being able to fulfill future payments due to racial termination, the planet's membership with the Galactic Federation was terminated, effective within two galactic standard months unless payment could be processed during that time period. Kirik-6 sat there, nervously sucking on his antenna, cradling two of the front legs close to his chest. The static on the receiver was constant hiss, as it had been for the last few months. Silence was all there was from the void of space. At first, Kirik-6 didn't notice the slight pulse in modulation in the static, a slight tone that seemed to meld in with the constant noise emitting from the speakers on the wall. Then, the speaker went dead silent. Krizik Six sprung out of his chair, frantically grabbing one of the speakers, shaking it, finding the action not helping, then tracing the cables to the amplifier. Then, the receiver. No, 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 not now, no! Panic setting into Krizik Six's voice, pitching ever higher. The amplifier was fine, the speaker was fine, it had to be the discs outside. Panic induced shudders caused stiff hairs on Krizik Six's abdomen to shed forcefully as Krizik Six frantically adjusted the camera angle with the controller, trying to make the camera point to the sky. Krizik Six froze, a shadow spanned across the entire sky. What most resembled a planet appeared to be on a collision course. Krizik Six snapped out of it, rushing to the console, altering the distress signal. Planetary distress call. Planetary distress call. Digitized string of coordinates. Planet hit by pulsar gamma ray. 
The atmosphere is dissipating rapidly. Unknown astronomical object on collision course, requesting immediate aid. The voice cracked as Grzyzyk cried into the microphone. The end was near. It was futile. Grzyzyk slunk back into his chair, legs drooping down onto his sides. An arm reached out and hit the play button, and a musical piece started playing, replacing the stress call. It was great classical piece, sung by a children's choir, accompanied with a melody played on the silk string harps. If anything, if Krizuxix's race was to disappear into the void, this would be their last words into it. Krizuxix sprang out of his chair and several instances back towards the wall on the far side, away from the speakers, when they suddenly fled to life. Music! But this was not the music Krizuxix broadcasted. It was melodious, played by instruments that Krizuxix had never heard before. Then a thunderous boom thundered through the thin atmosphere, high up. At first, Krizuxix believed that this was the planet-sized object finally making contact with the planet, and Krizuxix closed his tearful eyes. This was the end. Krizuxix was certain of this fact. Krizuxix slumped through the floor, crying. Then, there were more booms. Then the sounds of thruster engines. Krizuxix sprang onto action, running over to the monitor, frantically controlling the cameras. Ships, lots of them. Krizuxix had never seen so many ships, and especially not this design. They all seemed to be emerging from the planet-sized ship, and they were all appeared to be heading to their own location on the planet. No, 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 please don't be slavers, Krizuxix pleaded mentally, but the quickly went into a more ecstatic feeling. Slavers? So we're saved, we'll live, Krizuxix cried out, and he dropped down on all eight knees, raising the arms salutary towards the ceiling. Then the music faded, and a voice appeared on top of the music. The music itself seemed to calm down. Do not be alarmed, we have heard your call of distress. We have come to help. Stand by for planetary emergency evacuation. Krizuxix paused and stared at the speakers, jaws almost to the floor. Krizuxix had no idea what the voice said. It was a totally foreign language, and the Galactic Federation Standard Translator did not recognize it. Staring at the monitors, Krizuxix saw one of the ships heading for the broadcasting antenna and landing gently next to it. The sides of the ship opened up and at the same time what seemed to be like a bubble erupted from the ship outwards. Picking jaws up off the floor, Krizuxix zoomed in as bipedal creatures, all dressed in white, rushed out of the ship. One dressed in a bright yellow version, apparently the leader, as the rest rushed wherever it pointed. They moved quickly, rushing over to the bodies of brethren, showering each body in a bright blue light, before moving on to the next. Suddenly, the bright blue light flashed yellow with a flurry of movement occurred as Cyril rushed over to the body, lifting it up and carrying it inside the ship. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door, causing Krizuxix to jump to the ceiling, banging head hard. As the world went dark, Krizuxix saw one of the creatures enter the room and pause. When Krizuxix came to, the room was clad in a bluish light. This was not the broadcast station, Krizuxix thought calmly. Looking around, all appendices accounted for, Krizuxix observed. Each of the grippers pointed towards the ceiling were fully functional. The air was abundant, rich, as if Krizuxix was in the jungles down south, enjoying a hike amongst the fungi-capped stalk trees. Krizuxix turned the gaze towards what seemed to be a small gadget lying conveniently placed on the table next to the bed. Krizuxix stood up abruptly, their head aching profusely, gently touching the tender spot where the head had hit the ceiling. Krizuxix noted that the head was bandaged. Looking at the gadget, Krizuxix rolled over to the proper side, legs down, and prodded the device gently and very carefully. Krizuxix noted a blinking light when what appeared to be a button against better judgment, and with wild curiosity, he pushed it. The light around Krizuxix dimmed, and the music Krizuxix broadcast at the end started playing, before a holographic projection emerged 
over the device. It showed a planet orbited by a giant ship. All of the small ships seemed to be moving back to it, leaving the planet. Once they were all aboard, Krizixix saw a holographic presentation of creatures. Bipedal, with only four limbs in total. Then it shifted to what could be best described as a graphic representation of what had happened. Krizixix saw the broadcasting station, heard the distress signal, then saw the signal tram from the planet through the void to the far out into the reaches of the galactic arm. It zoomed into a small solar system, ending up on the third planet of the sun. With what seemed like a rapid, sped-up time-lapse, the ship's Krizik 6 apparently was currently on, was built, and then moving towards the signal. Letters appeared in front of Krizik 6, first in alien language, then wrapping into a language of Krizik 6's race. Krizik 6's eyes started to water, as the projection showed first Krizixix's body, then a number, then another body, and the number increased. More bodies rapidly added to the counter, appearing more of a blur than anything else. At the end, the number stopped, showing a desperately low numbers compared to how many there were. They had managed to save but a few tens of millions out of several billion. Yet, they were alive. Hopefully, safe and sound. Krizixix smiled and looked away from the projection, wiping a tear. Then noticed the creature standing next to the bed. This made Krizixix jump halfway across the room from the sitting position. It was an inherited ability of the species Krizixix's species evolved from, although being easily scared was entirely on Krizixix. The creature looked towards Krizixix with two eyes and bared its teeth, yet it did not seem imposing where it stood with its arms folded behind its back. It spoke. Krizik 6 didn't understand a word, so just resigned to stare blankly at the creature. The creature leaned forward and touched a holographic device. It chimed to life. It spoke again, but this time the holographic device made the text appear in what seemed to be like a cartoonish speech bubble next to the creature's head. We heard your distress call. Krizik 6 froze for a few seconds. Who? No. What are you? Krizik 6 asked. The creature bared its teeth again. It must be a way of expressing themselves, much like how we sway our bodies and use our limbs, Krizik 6 realized. We are human, it spoke. We are here to help. End of story. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons, Dragzoon WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catal, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.